I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. When I interviewed Jesse Perkins, Mr. Tiny Wolf, as he's known, he talked about how as much as he loves all the features and the tunability of Betaflight, he still felt like the Inductrix flight controller flew better for micro breast quads like Tiny Whoops. But there's a thing called Project Mockingbird, where a guy has tried to basically replicate what the Inductrix flight controller is doing using Betaflight. And that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to try to make this newbie drone Acrobee fly just as good as it as an actual like legit tiny whoop. Stay tuned. One of the most startling things to come out of my video uh, interview that I did with Jesse Perkins is that like literally all of the top Tiny Whip racing pilots, according to him, they're all flying angle mode, which is surprising because auto level modes kind of have this stigma among a lot of people that they're only for beginners, that they teach you bad habits, that real pilots don't fly auto level. But apparently that's not true in the Tiny Whip world. And he makes some arguments. If you haven't watched the interview, it was one of my favorite interviews. I don't know if he's just a fun guy to interview or what, but I really liked it. I highly recommend you check it out. If you're into Tiny Whoops, you may, you'll be really interested to hear what the, the like premier Tiny Whoop guy in the world probably has to say. And if you're not into Tiny Whoops, well, maybe it'll help you get into them. But he makes the argument that there are reasons why angle mode is more suited for these little quads. I'm not sure if it's just a cultural thing that Tiny whoop pilots just fly that way, and so that's what they do. But hey, you know what? If it if it would win races for somebody to fly in acro mode, somebody would fly in acro mode and win races. So maybe there's something to it. So that's why beta flight based tiny whoops haven't traditionally flown as well as the inductrix based ones, at least not without a lot of work to tune them up, uh, and maybe not even then. I should say, by the way, I'm referring to beta flight based tiny whoops. This here is a newbie drone Acrobee with the B Brain V2 flight controller in it. And Jesse Perkins would tell you that this is not a tiny whoop because he has a trademark on the term tiny whoop and only the actual tiny whoops that are sold by his company are tiny whoops. It's kind of like Xerox and Band Aid, you know, they're brand names, but they're also a lot of people use them generically. So this is a beta flight based tiny whoop. And Betaflight has traditionally not paid that much attention to performance in auto level modes. That's just not where the devs are focused. It has an auto level mode, but nobody's tried to make it fly really good. And as we'll see in, when we explore this Project Mockingbird thing, there are some things that the Inductrix flight controller does that, that are just completely out foreign to those of us who fly bigger quads. So let's get into it. Let's look at Project Mockingbird and get started. Project Mockingbird is described in this document. I'll put a link to it in the video description. You can go check it out yourself. Uh, it is headed up by Patrick J. Clark. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, and Patrick is not involved in the making of this video at all. Uh, I'm sure he would have been if I had asked, but it's just, you know, it's 11 at night. And I sat down. Well, the truth of the matter is I got some people coming over tomorrow and we're going to fly these. And so I want to go ahead and get it configured before tomorrow. So I'm going to, as long as I'm doing it, I'll make a video about it. That's my policy. But thank you to Patrick for, for heading this up. Now I've plugged the quadcopter into the computer. And the first thing I want to show you is... I'm running Betaflight 324. Patrick says that Betaflight 322 is the first one where it really started to feel good and get to be to the point where it could be on par with the Inductrix in terms of flight performance. So if you're running an older version of Betaflight, you need to upgrade to at least 322 to get the most out of this. And heck, as long as you're upgrading, go to 324. So then the first thing to do is to turn on dynamic filter and we'll save and reboot. The next section has to do with PIDs, and I'm not normally a fan of copying PIDs. Unless you have the exact same quad as somebody else, the PIDs probably aren't going to perform the same. However, in this case, the performance of these Tiny Whoops is much more similar. Uh, even though you do have some difference in the motor size that you might be running, the overall weight is very similar. The weight distribution and the frame shape is very similar. And, I mean, we all copy everybody else's PIDs when we install Betaflight, we copy the default PIDs. So I mean, the default PIDs have been developed to be good for a, a wide range of people. And that's probably the case here. We just have default PIDs for these micros. So I'm gonna go ahead next, 
go into the PID tuning tab and copy these PIDs. Next, he has a set of three rate profiles and uh, we should probably make a separate video about how to set up inflate adjustments for adjusting rates, but I guess we're going to do that here. So, so I'm going to go to the rate profile, pull down and make sure rate profile one is selected. And I'm just going to copy his numbers. What he says here is that this is what you're going to use for freestyle if you fly your whoop freestyle. And so if you have a particular freestyle rate that you like for your whoop, this is where you would put it. Now we're going to switch to rate profile two. And he says RC rate 2.21. And he must mean super rate zero. Yeah, it's pretty close. His numbers aren't coming out exactly the same as mine. He says max velocity 1048. I'm getting 1053. I wonder if that's because I'm on beta flight 324 and he's on 322, but it's pretty close. RC rate 2.07 and zero super rate. Yeah, pretty close. And profile two is going to be used for angle mode and is purely linear with no super expo. It's got a little bit of expo. No, it's got no expo. So it's got no expo either. So this is purely linear rates, no expo at all. And then profile three, he's got for horizon mode, which I really don't fly horizon mode, but we'll go ahead through the uh, his setup. He says horizon mode may be better at some races to make the rates more like angle. Well, anyway, let's go ahead and copy it. And we'll switch from rate profile two to rate profile three and copy this as well. Okay. And we'll save that. And I want to also look at his angle strength and his horizon and transition. The horizon transition controls how far you have to deflect the stick before horizon mode switches from, uh, from auto level mode to rate mode. Horizon mode will switch from auto level mode to rate mode once you deflect the stick so far. So we'll just copy his values exactly. And we'll set the angle limit to 60 like he has. Let me just go double check the, that appears to be the same for all of them. Okay, so that's going to be the same for all of them. Then we'll go to the filter tab. Oh, I need to save that. We'll go to the filter tab. We'll change the load pass to PT1. And we will turn off all the notch filters. And this is a radical move on a bigger quad because you can overheat the motors and smoke the motors. I, I suppose the argument is that on these really small quads that, uh, I mean, how much vibration are you going to get on these tiny props? I don't know. Maybe they need less filtering or maybe this guy knows something else that we don't know that I don't know. He says here that he has air mode on aux one, the same as his arm, and he uses it for all modes. Now I'm going to accomplish the same thing by going to the configuration and making sure that air mode is turned on here in the features. And I do that, well, I do that for all my quads, but especially for tiny whoops, uh, it's nice because it means that when you lower the throttle all the way, that it won't just drop out of the air. However, if you are used to the motor stopping when you drop the throttle, if you're used to landing simply by dropping the throttle versus disarming, then this is going to be very different. With air mode on, the motors will not stop when you drop the throttle. So if you try to land, you're going to need to actually actively disarm at the moment that you want to touch down. Here's my flight mode screen where I've got my arming mode set up and my angle mode. If you want to learn about setting up flight modes, I have another video about that and I'll put a link to it in the upper right. But what we need to look at is exactly how angle mode is going to be defined because we want the quadcopter to switch rate profiles when we switch modes. In acro mode, we want it to have the acro rates. In angle mode, we want it to have the linear inductric style rates. So notice that angle mode is aux three and it's basically aux three is at a thousand. So now we're gonna to go to in-flight adjustments and we're gonna set, it's enabled when channel aux three, let me make this full screen. When channel aux three is down around a thousand and the then apply is going to be 
rate profile selection using slot slot two via channel aux three. And this is gonna be the same channel that you picked over here. So let me save that real quick. So here in the modes, I'm using aux three to activate angle mode. And here in the in-flight adjustments, we're saying when basically when aux three activates angle mode, then select uh, rate profile two via aux three. And we would do that again if we wanted to have the third mode for horizon mode, we would say if enabled aux three, and we would move this to wherever horizon mode was configured and basically do the same thing. Oh, aux three, I meant, but I'm not going to do that because I don't have, uh, I don't have that. So now I'm going to grab my transmitter and a battery and I'm going to just see if this works. All right. So here in the modes and that's in angle mode and now it's not in angle mode, right? So switch up is angle mode, switch center is, uh, is not. Yeah. And you can see as I flip the switch, it switches between rate profile one and rate profile two. So that is working. The next thing we need to do is set up some custom mixing on the Tyrannus. And what that means is that apparently the stock Inductrix flight controller mixes roll and pitch into throttle. And what that means is that when you deflect the roll or pitch stick, the Inductrix will increase the throttle proportional to how much you've deflected the roller pitch stick. And if you're flying in an angle mode, then that makes sense because the more you deflect that stick, the more that the quadcopter will pitch forward or to the side. And the more the quadcopter pitches forward to the side, the more you have to raise the throttle to keep the same altitude. So by doing that automatically with mixing, it makes flying a little bit simpler. If you've ever flown a big quad and as you go into a turn or as you pitch forward to start flying forward, you have to raise the throttle to maintain altitude, you've experienced the same thing. This isn't going to work though in acro mode because the deflection of the stick doesn't directly uh, correspond to the angle of the quad like it does in angle mode. So in, in acro mode, the quad could be upside down. You, you center the stick, it just holds its attitude, right? Uh, that when you deflect the stick, it controls how fast it's moving, but it doesn't control what actual angle it's at. So in fact, I think we should set this mix up. We'll see if he does it in the document. We should set this mix up so it only applies when we are in angle mode and not when we are in acro mode. Let's go over to the bench so you can see what I'm doing on the Tyrannus. I'm gonna press menu, and then I'm gonna press the page key until I come to the mixer screen. I'm gonna press down until I come to whichever line has my throttle input on it. And I'm gonna hold enter down, long press enter, and choose insert after. Now we're adding a new input to the channel for the throttle. We're gonna modify that throttle value. The source is gonna be either the pitch or the roll. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press enter, highlight throttle here and press enter so that throttle is flashing. That's the source for the mix. But it's not gonna be throttle, it's gonna be pitch or roll. And what I can do is I can just take the pitch stick and I can, or the roll stick, I can move it over and you'll see it automatically fills aileron as the appropriate input but I don't want 100% input. So let's just take a look at what that does. So here's, here's our mixer lines. We have on channel three, we have the throttle and we have the aileron. So we can actually see, yeah, we can actually see in the upper left here or upper right here, the value. And as I move the throttle up and down, we can see the channel moving up and down. And because we've also got this aileron mix, as I move the aileron, the channel also goes up and down, but that's not exactly what we want. For one thing, notice that, let me center the throttle real quick. Notice that the aileron is fully mixed into the throttle channel. In other words, the full deflection of the aileron is coming, coming through the throttle channel. And that's not really what we want. We just want a, the throttle, we don't want the throttle to go to full when we deflect the aileron all the way to the right. And that's what would happen now. They suggest uh, in the document, that you use a weight of 30%. And what that means is that when the, when the uh, aileron is fully deflected, the throttle will be increased by 30%. So there's a weight of 30%.
but we're not done yet. Now notice I've got the throttle centered, right? So again, look right here so you can see that what the channel is doing. I've got the throttle centered, and as I deflect the aileron, the throttle goes up by presumably 30%, and that's in fact what we want. But notice that when I decrease the throttle, when I, when I uh, rather, when I roll left, notice that the, that the throttle channel goes down by 30%. And that's the opposite of what we want. Whether we roll to the left or roll to the right, we want the throttle to increase slightly to compensate for the fact that the quadcopter is no longer level. And the way we fix that is, we're going to edit that mix again. You guys can just input this all at once. You don't have to edit the mix five different times. We're going to go to the curve, and the curve we're going to use is function absolute value of x. And what that's going to do is it's going to say whether the uh, roll stick goes positive or negative, always add the absolute value of that to this channel. In other words, whenever we deflect this, it increases the throttle slightly. And we've got the throttle centered now to keep things simple, but you can see that no matter where the throttle is, when I deflect roll, it slightly increases the throttle value. Now we need to do the same thing for pitch because we, we want the, the quadcopter can, can roll left or right. It can also pitch forward or back. And we want to increase the throttle regardless. When well, there's an easy way to do that, I'm going to put the cursor on this line. I'm going to long press, and I'm going to choose Copy. And it's going to make a copy of that line. Now here we've got this highlighted uh, uh, line. And you see we haven't actually copied the line. If I just press down once, now we've got a second copy of the line. We've just dropped right here. And I'll press Enter to exit out of that. So now we have the line in there twice, but we don't want to add the aileron in twice. I'm going to long press enter and choose edit. I'm going to go to the source, press enter one time so it's flashing to modify it, and then I'm going to push the stick pitch forward, and now we've got the elevator as the source. So now what we should see is that for the throttle, let me move that out of the way, for the throttle, when I move pitch or roll in any direction, the throttle is increased slightly. But we're not quite done yet. I said that we only wanted to do that when we're in angle mode. And the way we can accomplish that is like this. Go to the switch parameter, press enter one time to modify it. Now it's flashing, meaning it's going to be modified. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the switch that I use to switch between angle and angle mode, horizon mode, whatever, and I'm going to put it into angle mode. And so now this will only be active when I'm in angle mode. Switch SD up. And I'm going to do the same thing for that second mixer line. Now, if you don't have a Tyrannus, you're not out in the cold. There are instructions in the Project Mockingbird manual for a Fly Sky Radio and a Spectrum Radio. So go check that out. And it's not that complicated of a mix. So you could probably figure out how to do it on almost any other radio that you've got. And that's it. That's the full setup. It's, I, although I've managed to probably make a 20 minute video out of it, it's actually not that complicated to set up the rates, set up the PIDs and set up your transmitter with the, uh, the mixing and also be on beta flight 3.2.2 or newer. So there's only one thing left to do for me to take this out and fly it. And I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to have some buddy. You know, I figured out if you missed my interview with Jesse, that the way to enjoy tiny whoops is to get a whole bunch of friends over and just sit around your living room, smacking them into each other's face and flying on, a, on a, an impromptu racetrack around your house. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. I'll uh, have some friends over and, and fly and we'll see how it flies. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know how this works for you. If you have a Betaflight based whoop, and especially if you have some actual Inductrix based actual whoops, let me know how this works. I've heard people say that this they've never had their Betaflight based whoop fly so good. I would love to hear from you if that's true. It would mean a lot to me to know that, uh, that I was able to introduce you to this great concept. Thank you guys for watching. And thank you to Patrick J. Clark, Q Reacher, for starting Project Mockingbird and everybody else who's contributed. Of course, he's not the only one who's worked on it. Happy flying, you guys. Thank you.